Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I was asked by, you know, I, would, I wouldn't say a lot, but several people. And it, it is a very good um, idea, and I do appreciate each and every one of them for sending me the idea. If I would do a um, two-part series on the differences between what Timothy Jones Jr.'s uh, um, life in South Carolina and what he has, he has fed and has, has a availability to do um, and his restrictions, what is the difference between his life um, in prison versus what Christopher Watts' life is like in Dodge Correction Center in Wisconsin. And they wanted to know about his uh, food, commissary, and um, availability in, in how is he able to uh, move about the prison. Because Timothy Jones Jr. is on death row, and Christopher Watts is just serving a sentence longer than he could possibly live. It's basically, it's life without parole, and he will die in prison. But not at the hands of the actual prison. So, basically, um, when it comes to the uh, dietary food plan, it's the same. They get the same nutritional value per day, per inmate. So many calories, so much fat, so much sodium. It's regulated by the federal uh, prison system. So they both receive about the same amount of fat and calories and everything else. Um, but it, the food may differ in a little bit. In South Carolina, the, in the, on the breakfast menu, they have uh, um, more oatmeal and more um, instant grits that they give uh, the inmates. They do uh, try to vary in you know, different seasonal fruits. In the lunch and dinner um, they serve the inmates there, they do get uh, fried okra. And they do get uh, um, a couple other things that would be more regional than what Christopher Watts would get. Another large uh, difference between the different meal plans is there in South Carolina, they have access and they have an actual contract with um, a very large uh, um, distributor of fresh juices and the prison system there gets what they call the second run um, juices. So the first run juices are packaged and bottled for the consumers that you would purchase in a supermarket. The second run juices would be uh, more of like a, they add water back to the pulp um, and then strain it again so it's cloudy. It may not uh, have the same nutritional value, but it's very, you know, it's safe to drink. And it does have the, you know, some of the flavor and, you know, and, and so on that, you know, that you would associate with that actual fruit juice. So, and they, you know, um, and one of the other things is that in South Carolina, they do serve neutral loaf. Neutral loaf is a very... Um, uh, real thing. It is something that can be served um, for days on end, especially uh, during a lockdown. And when it comes to death row and Timothy Jones Jr., he gets the same exact meal as the general population. So the inmate who is there in the prison who has been sentenced to five years is getting the same food that Timothy Jones Jr. is getting, and he was a contempt, condemned to die individual. There is no difference. The, se they, the kitchen pumps out the meals. They serve them. Where in general population, they may go to a um, chow hall, mess hall, whatever you want to call it, you know, um, some place to go eat, and they go through a line, you know, in groups. Um, where death row, no. They are served their meals right at their cell. They have a little door that folds down at, at their door, and the meals are put in through the uh, that. They and then the inmate pulls them in the rest of the way, and then they set the drink down. And uh, they, you know, they the inmate puts a drink cup out. They fill the drink cup, and then they bring in their drink. They, so everything is right there in their actual cell. They are not able to move around. When a death row inmate moves from their cell. They are moved by a minimum of four guards. Um, you know, there can be more, and they can be in riot gear when they move them if the individual is acted out in a violent manner towards any of the staff. 
Whereas in um, Christopher Watts, that the only time that he will see someone dressed up in full riot gear is in the, the extraction team. And that's about the only time he will ever see it, is when they're extracting someone from their cell because they, they're refusing to cooperate or follow the rules. But in South Carolina, if, you, if the inmate acts out, they'll see them all the time. And so um, that's pretty much the difference there. Um, Timothy Jones Jr. is locked down 23-1, and one. Um, just like the uh, YouTube uh, channel that's out there. But 23-1, um, the one hour a day that he is allowed out of his cell is to go to either um, the med seek medical attention or he's going to outside recreation. And when he goes outside to outside recreation, they are the four guards at minimum will take him from there outside to an area that is basically a cage that is 20 feet in length, and I think it's uh, 12 and a half feet wide. And there's one they put one inmate in there, and then they'll put another one, and the next one, and the next one. And it's one giant unit, but it's separated from you know top to bottom, so they can't climb over and get to the another death row inmate. And that is their exercise area. They are not just freely allowed to walk around outside by themselves anywhere. And again, when they are moved from point A to point B, four guards move them you know, at a time. They are never allowed to any physical contact with anyone. And when they are moved, they are shackled, um, handcuffed and shackled you know, on death row. Christopher Watts, he, he, the difference there with him is he's able to go out of his cell to eat, and he eats in a common area with other uh, inmates who are there in his housing pod. And he has um, a little bit more flexibility and more time out of his actual cell than uh, Timothy Jones Jr. Timothy Jones Jr. will die at the hands of South Carolina eventually. Christopher Watts will die from either the hands of another inmate or he'll die of old age or some kind of medical condition. That is what that is the end game for Christopher Watts and that's the end game for Timothy Jones Jr. Now, how long will Timothy Jones Jr. be on death row? There is no way to actually say, you know, um, conclusively that he will be there. The bare minimum is 10 years if he gives up some of his appeals. He will be on there on death row for at least 10 years. Um, the first uh, the first appeal that goes into a, you know, a, a process is an automatic appeal of the sentencing and of the case itself, and that's done automatically. He doesn't even have to really file that one, but they do. Uh, they file the appeal, and it's automatic. The state supreme court will take a look at his case and make sure that everything you know was followed by the rules and. The lower court uh, didn't, uh, you know, you know, um, railroad him into this conviction. We all know he's guilty. We've all watched the court case, so we we are well versed on uh, what Timothy Jones Jr. did. And um, very seldom is new evidence uh, on the state supreme court in that first appeal is new evidence brought forth. Um, it's all, it's basically just a review of the actual evidence that has already been brought forth. You know, both sides do get to argue, you know, and his defense team will definitely argue that he was, a, you know, um, has a mental health issue, and that's what made him do it. They will bring up other issues and say this is why he did this and why he did that, you know, and that all of it together shows, you know, that he was not of a sound mind. They're definitely going to bring up issues like that. Even if he, Timothy Jones Jr., doesn't want them to, they're there to fight for on his behalf to try to get his sentence commuted from you know being sentenced to death to um, you know life in prison without possibility of parole. They're trying to save his life. That is all his legal team is trying to do from here on out. They're never going to get the conviction overturned unless there's some giant grievous error that says, look, you need to go back and retry this entire case. Okay, um, so moving on. Uh, commissary. How is commissary different for a death row inmate versus what Christopher Watts can get? Well, uh, you'd be surprised, but there's actually more available in the state of South Carolina for all inmates. 
on through the commissary system than there is for the in within the state of Wisconsin. The state of Wisconsin restricts what they actually sell and have available for all their inmates, and South Carolina offers a heck of a lot more. A um, couple of examples right off the top, and I'll try to put a picture up here, is the commissary in South Carolina, they offer him two different varieties of tennis shoes, um, high tops and uh, um, regular sneakers that he can purchase himself um, with his own money off of commissary. The price of the sneakers are about twice what they would run out here in the, you know, um, the uh, general population out here. So you could go to like a Payless store, you know, shoe store, and you could buy, you know, um, if they, I don't know if you have Payless shoe stores near you, but they're uh, a they're a huge uh, chain of lower um, quality, but uh, they're you know shoes. They have some good quality, but most of it is you know knockoffs uh, of another brand. But you can go to a pair of shoe store, and what you can pay twenty dollars for, they will sell there in the prison system for you know thirty five, forty dollars for the same you know exact pair almost. Um, and they these a lot of these shoes are made just for the prison system. And they're not sold in, to the general population anywhere. But there's a massive market that is out there on eBay where a lot of these inmates will take these home, these items home um, after they've, they've been released. And they will put them on eBay and they sell like hotcakes. Because a lot of inmates are trying to you know, hold on to something you know, for what they know and what is familiar to them. Especially if they spent a lot of time behind bars. And here is another example. Right now, you are seeing a series of different instant coffees on your screen. There's the yellow pack, there's the brown pack, the purple pack, and the blue pack, and then the, and the black pack. The black is an individual packet of uh, instant coffee. Now, these individual instant coffees that are in the black package are only offered four times a year in what they call the seasonal holiday package. They, and it's basically a bunch of things that are that are not no, normally available on normal commissary, but you know Timothy Jones uh, and his uh, super fans that are out there who have been you know riding him already in jail, and I'm sure they've uh, followed him to uh, prison to you know correspond with him that way. Some of them are trying to save his soul and you know offering you know the Lord um, to him to forgive him for his sins. Um, and he's going to probably take up every single one of them. And some of them are, you know, yeah, some of these uh, super fans are, they're going to fall in love with uh, um, Timothy because he is completely unavailable. Maybe they're emotionally damaged themselves, but we're not going to get into that. But they will write him and they will give him money and they will do anything they can to be part of his life before he is sentenced to actual death. And he is. He dies at the hands of South, you know, of the state of South Carolina. So that is basically the difference between the two. And Timothy Jones Jr. has very little um, access outside. When, oh, uh, by the way, um, he, uh, when it comes to visitation, Timothy Jones Jr. will never touch another human being as long as he, he lives. If his family um, and friends want to come visit him, he, he will either correspond with them through on the other side of plexiglass, or he will correspond with them via tele, um, CCTV um, system on a, on a monitor. They are moving from the plexiglass booth um, and a lot of the institutions. I am not entirely sure if Kirkland has moved to this computer um, you know, system, but they, they are moving, all of these uh, prisons in South Carolina are moving in this direction. And I will try to put up a couple pictures of the, of the different ones here. So he will never have contact with another human being, you know, except for a guard, you know, and they're, all of them are holding on to his chains and walk, to walk in front of him to hold, him, hold his chains as they're walking and moving him um, to, to and from. And that's it. You know, physical contact is at a very, very limited um, amount. You know, Christopher Watts, um, if he could make friends um, in prison, and he probably has, he could uh, play checkers with them, shake their hands, you know, um, you know, do whatever. He'll have physical contact with people. So, and, but that even though they're both convicted of you know killing children, you know, uh, but that is where the the difference uh, is uh, mainly at.
Okay, if you have any um, questions about, uh, you know, Timothy Jones Jr. and what he is served um, and what he is available to get on commissary, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to uh, like, share um, this video with your friends and family. Um, I don't, it, just because it's informative to you, it may be very informative to your loved ones as well. Um, and thank you again for stopping by and checking out the video. You stay safe out there.